All right, so Legend of Korra, book four, episode six. And this is finally the episode where we get to see Kuvera versus uh, Korra. But for some reason, the only part of the episode I kept, you know, ex you know, excited about was Varric and his insanity. Just holy crap. Um, but either way, Kuvera and Korra fight is just as epic as I thought it would be. Or at least I was hoping it would be. Um, and the way it comes together is pretty neat. Although I will say Sue was just as dumb as I thought she was last episode. Coming in here thinking, just take a Kuvera and the rest of the army will disperse. Um, but she was there at, at the uh, inauguration. And she saw that her soldiers were applauding. I doubt they would have just been like, oh, Kuvera's gone. I guess we're done here. Bye. No, they would have at least tried to avenge her or, you know carry on her mission of uniting the entire earth empire so ultimately taking down Kuvera she would have just been a martyr and I can't believe Sue can't see that so I kind of had to agree with Kuvera when she said that Sue was a coward she just didn't really know what the right steps were to take in handling you know the situation um and again I like how Janora tells Opal look I know they're your family, but you took a non-aggression pack when you became an airbender or air nomad. And while I understand Opal's, you know, fear for her family, she was just immediately ready to jump in there and just say, Cora, take her out, kill her now. It's like, Jesus, I mean, come on, Opal. Um, but I mean, she was raised by Sue, so I guess that's going to come as expected. Who knows? Uh, but either way, when finally Cora and Kuvera meet on the battlefield, I kind of like how up to this point, Kuvera has kind of lived up to her word. She never broke any of the treaties or negotiations or any of the deals they made. And it was ultimately, you know, people pushing Korra to, you know, go against, you know, Kuvera's wishes and just like, no, take her out now. Kill her, kill her, kill her. It's like, take it easy, guys. And so they begin fighting. And of course, you know, Korra is out of practice. She hasn't really bended that well for the last three years. Uh, even with the poison out of her body, you know, she hasn't had much practice. So, of course, Kuvera gives her a run for her money. Finally, she's forced into the Avatar, Avatar state. And it looks like she's about to kill her, you know, just throw a giant rock on her. And at first, I thought it would just be like she feels sorry for her or maybe she'd not want to kill her. But then all of a sudden, the Korra image comes up again, haunting her. It's like, oh, no. And at first, I'm thinking, oh, that's good because, you know, that's still a problem with her. She's still afraid of the things she's uh, capable of doing in the Avatar state, same way Aang was. But then I started thinking, do we really need that? I think it would have been more uh, of a parallel to Aang if she just didn't want to kill her. She would have believed killing her wouldn't have solved anything. Because we have to remember that she's the new start of the Avatar chain. She's no longer able to talk to the previous avatars or have any connection to them. She's the beginning. She's the new first avatar. So what her actions are going to be an example for future avatars. Does she continue the chain of previous avatars of killing people as, as long as it contains the peace? Or a restarting the chain that Aang started of finding new alternatives of stopping the villain and, and protecting peace? So ultimately, that would have been much stronger for me. But again, it's just like, no, she's haunted by this image of her avatar self. Now, whether, you know, that's still a parallel to Aang and his fear of his avatar powers. But I don't know. I think the whole um, idea of being the new first avatar and setting an example to future avatars would have probably been more interesting. Uh, but it was still a good fight. And of course, Kuvera, you know, takes advantage of... Korra's, you know, little episode and takes, you know, contains her in rock. And at the very end of that fight, I was kind of worried. It looks like she was, Kuvera looks like she was about to kill Korra. Um, because she turns these little plates into like really sharp little mini blades. Or maybe they weren't. Maybe it was just the angle of the camera. Because if she was about to kill Korra, then that would have been really uncharacteristically of her from up to this point she's kept her word sort of yeah she's kept her word most of the throughout most of this uh you know empire business uh, she of course she expects you know uh people to go against her word she she expects people to just attack her outright you know she gets them mad hoping they you know try to do a killer you know and turn and turn into a martyr martyr uh 
but she's about to kill Korra, and that just didn't sit right with me. But then, of course, you know, Opal and Janora come in, you know, protecting Korra with giant uh, tornado, bringing in uh, Iki and um, Milo, and, you know, getting out of there. But then, of course, you know, that means Saifu is now under Kuvera's control. And, of course, the only people that don't bow down are the rest of Sue's family. And they're going to be sent over to, I guess, the re-education camps. And ultimately, that now, uh, Kuvera puts her husband and Julie in charge of the project because Varric supposedly blew himself up. Now, Varric's part of the episode was my favorite by far. And not just because of the comedy, because it showed a new side of Varric that I didn't expect. His uh, ingenious way of getting out of a situation. And it's just, he actually is insane. Because uh, what he does is he tricks all the guards and of course including, including Junior into thinking he's working on the project. But of course he's just setting it up to blow it, blow it sky high. It's pretty much self-destruct himself. And he, I guess it's, it was his way of saying, I'd rather die than work for Kuvera. Now, of course, the whole, throughout the whole thing, he's trying to give signals to Bolin. He's like, don't worry, I got a plan. And Bolin the entire time is like, uh, well, why are you winking at me? What's going on? What? It's like, come on, Bolin. It, it shouldn't be that hard. I mean, I know up to this point, there have been hints that you might not be as smart as some of your other friends. But when someone winks at you during a situation like this, it's pretty much a good signal that he's up to something to save them. You got to figure that out. I don't know, I just feel like maybe they're making Bolden too dumb in this season. But it's, I guess it created some sort of comedy between Varric and him. Uh, ultimately, they convinced the soldiers to get out of there, you know, and separate the train. Now it's just Varric and Bolden in the train with the bomb. And of course, Bolden thinking, ah, good plan and tricking them. is like, oh no, I didn't trick them. That's actually a bomb. We're going to blow ourselves up. But of course, Bolin's having none of that, you know, he finds a way, you know, the hatch underneath the train, escapes with Varric, and the whole thing blows up, and I have to say, that is the most beautiful nuke I've ever seen. It's all pink and everything, it's like, oh, it gives me a nice warm feeling knowing all those people are gonna die with the color of pink. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, of course, you know, Varric and Bolin escape, and... I guess I can say Varric's insanity was offset with the last line saying, Ah, Bolin, you did the thing. I knew you would do it. So I guess he was half expecting Bolin to fig finally figure it out. It's like, I want you to save us, okay? With your earthbending, come on. Uh, but I don't know. Maybe it would have been more fun if Varric was actually was that insane, thinking, well, I'm going to die. Good, I'll meet you on the other side, Julie. It's like, okay, Varric, you crazy son of a bitch. Ah. Uh, but either way, you know, now the experiment is still going underway with Julie and Junior working together. And I don't know, maybe Varric and Bolin will find their way back to uh, Republic City somehow. And it'll be Varric's know-how of the weapon w that will be able to turn things around for everyone. But part of me was half expecting Bolin to be the only one to escape. And Varric's still on the train when it blew up. And then, I don't know, maybe he got superpowers. I guess that would break the whole series itself, but it would have been just so much fun having a supervillain Varric because he's already crazy and hilarious like most other supervillains that we love are. So I don't think it would have been that bad of a plot twist. It just would have been more just amazing. Um, but either way, now that Junior and Julia are the ones working on it, maybe one of them will become... Uh, the super villain. I don't know. I don't know why I'm pushing for a super villain. Uh, maybe it's just gonna be, be successful. Hey, here's a super weapon. We have it now. We have a nuke. Yay, that's it. But, you know, it would have been more fun. Super villain. Come on. Uh, I mean, it's, it can't be that crazy. We already have people that can bend the elements of the entire planet. It's like wind, water, fire, earth. Why not someone who could, with the ability of superpowers or something like spell? Spirit bending, like, or spirit bombs. Oh my god, I'm hoping this <laughs> to turn into Dragon Ball Z. Oh, I guess that would be bad. Um, forget what I said. Maybe we shouldn't have a super villain. Or maybe we should. I don't know. I'm conflicted now. But either way, fun episode. Great fight between Kovera and Korra. Great Varric moment. And really, 
things are now finally pushing itself. It's like, okay, where is this going to go? How much worse is it going to get? Is it going to get for Team Avatar? And what will happen to Guevara near the end? I mean, the way she's bending that space metal, who knows? You know, she seems like she's going to do something that um, will just surprise me again. But either way, you know, now the Earth Empire is now completely under Guevara's control. They no longer have any way of... You know, coming in here and just taking her on, you know, one on one. Now she has an entire army. We gotta stop. But hopefully, Cover doesn't just start you know, going to other nations, taking over, because then that just really put her in the wrong. And I don't really want that. She's already kind of putting me in a questionable uh, mood with her her methods. It's like, come on, you're already making me, you know, shake my belief in what you're doing. Don't make it worse by invading other countries. That's just too far. But either way, great episode, loved it, can't wait for the rest. Till then, I'm Tony Dragon, bye bye.